Uh, welcome back. Uh, I, for those of you who are here for the nine o'clock panel, I am still Rob White. I'm still Dean of your mom and dad. Um, what happens beyond the Williams classroom? A lot, as it turns out. At least half of a Williams education happens um, when remarkable young people, you know who they are, uh, live with and learn from each other. Uh, my colleagues this morning will talk about four major extra extracurricular opportunities that engage a great many Williams students, often in deeply transformative ways. To my left is Director of Athletics, Lisa Melendy. To Lisa's left is Bilal Ansari, Assistant Vice President for Institutional Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion. To Bilal's left is Paula Consolini, Director of the Center for Learning in Action. And to Paula's left is Christine Siebert, Sustainability Coordinator with our Zilka Center for Environmental Initiatives. Um, each of them will briefly summarize the scope of their respective programs, I, as I remind them and as they're really amazingly able to do. Uh, five minutes is not like a whole lot of time to describe what your whole day a job is like. Um, but uh, we will leave time afterwards for questions and uh, they'll be eager to take them and answer them. I'm going to ask Lisa to begin first. Please join me in a warm welcome to our panelists. Good morning. Uh, it's great to, to see people here. Uh, it's nice to be back. Uh, last year we were outside. It was pretty darn cold, so it's good to be inside. Uh, happy to, well, I don't have a mask on, but I hope you could put up your mask. It's, it's a little bit nicer than the freezing cold we were in last year, uh, trying to do this safely. So we're really excited to have things a little bit back. Um, you know, more normal for us on campus. Um, as Rob said, I'm the Director of Athletics and Chair of the Physical Education Department here on campus. We are the department that works with every student on campus because we have a physical education requirement at Williams. Um, so everybody comes and takes classes, our coaches, our faculty members who both coach their teams and teach the physical education classes. Um, we have an intramural program that is uh, becoming more and more robust. Uh, we have about 750 varsity athletes that we interact with uh, across 32 sports. Um, and again, that is you know, a good deal of time that, that our coaches spend with, with student athletes. Um, and there are club teams as well that are run out of the uh, Office of Campus Life, um, not under our auspices, but we work closely with them, scheduling facilities, um, providing equipment, and, um, and working with them around hiring coaches. So again, a lot of activity, and it's really centered on um, you know, our physical education curriculum and the reason that we have a athletic program is really about movement and wellness and holistic teaching. I'm really trying to make sure we're capturing and, and developing the entire um, student in the different ways uh, students learn in many different ways. And so for some, the learning on the field or in the pool um, is really complementary to what's happening in the classroom and we're really hoping those lessons are transferable back and forth, just simple things like practice improves your performance in any setting. Um, so again, really focusing on, on our processes. Um, we do like to win, but I, um, we definitely are not focused on winning. We're focused on the process and on how we are um, engaged in interacting and building relationships and teaching the subject matter um, and, and interacting through sport. Um, I'd say too, uh, increasingly, uh, over the past few years, our students have become more involved um, outside of the playing fields in activism, which these, these all are gonna talk about. They cross over with all the areas that you're gonna hear from later. Um, we have a lot of student groups in our, that are sort of centered in our athletic department. Um, the HSC Bolin, um, uh, which is a student athlete of color group, uh, AIA, um, Allies in Action, um, AAA, Asian American, athletes, and then um, uh, abs, um, anything but straight and athletics. So those are groups that are also sort of sponsored in our area and we're really focused on um, how are we supporting and including everyone that comes into our spaces so that everyone feels welcome, both again in the physical education classes that we are holding as well as on their teams. And um, we are engaged in that work and our students are very actively engaged in um, making sure that we're creating um, or striving to create inclusive team cultures, um, understanding also how are we supporting the mental health um, and wellness, sports and athletics and movement are things that can really aid 
in supporting a student's mental health. So we're, you know, again, talking about that in great detail and, and thinking about how are we partners on campus in supporting um, the wellness of our students. And again, that's really the focus and the reason for us. Uh, so I'm just checking my notes to see if I've forgotten anything else that I want to talk about. I don't think so. Uh, and uh, I look forward to your questions. And that's sort of an overview that you might have questions about any of those topics. And I'll kick it over to Bilal. Well, thank you, Lisa. Um, so yes, uh, welcome. Um, and also again, uh, I want to thank you for uh, allowing us the gift of having your um, young ones here. Uh, we appreciate uh, all that you have put into each one of your children because we benefit um, from that, all that you've poured into them. We we see it every day, we hear it in their activism, their, their, their trying to build uh, a welcoming space wherever they are. Sometimes things fall short of that, and this is where our office uh, comes to help to kind of you know, facilitate dialogue and uh, meaning making um, within um, different um, spaces. So in our office, the way that we do that is uh, we have a multi-cultural uh, center called the Light Davis Center. Um, and in, the, in that center, we take care of 23 uh, registered, like um, uh, registered organizations of like of like students of varying uh, identities. Um, um, we have the Black Student Union. We have the uh, the Latinos, and the uh, we have the like, Chinese American. Uh, we have the, 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 the Asian American kind of like group that coordinates the Korean, the, the, all, just a huge sloth of coordination, of coalition building, of thinking about how we can live in space in a more meaningful way. And a lot of times that doesn't, um, that doesn't um, mean that um, uh, uh, things are all, all, all right. Um, a lot of times, uh, like we have now, there's an uh, there's an Asian American athletic group that's saying, you know, we need to we need to create another group, even though we have five around identities, but we need another group created um, just for our needs in athletics. And so we're working at trying to help them to like support them um, and their 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 personal identity and social identity as athletes um, here on campus. Um, the way in which we do that, we support um, gatherings around food. We have an international house um, that has a that is an inf that is an affinity um, lived space, a residential house right next to our house. That house doesn't have a kitchen <laughs> in it, so we are trying to support them to uh, so that they can have some food from home or things that are common. Uh, so we're working at um, trying to pr pr provide them a space. Where they can make their 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 um their home more like home, um, and so um, we we also I'm also in an office where we have Pi. I don't want to miss um, Pi is like is like pathways to inclusive excellence. Uh, I thought you were going to tell me there's real Pi. Oh, <laughs> no, we are sweet like that though. <laughs> But it's pathways to inclusive excellence, um, and so we have, our, so that we support like uh, fellows, the Mellon Mays and and Vivian and uh, like Davidson fellows that, and so over the years here at Williams, we have supported marginalized students, and 78 of them have gone on to become uh, PhDs, um, and so we support them here all the way along that that journey, so that um, our students can. Um, uh, have a pathway to success um, within academics, um, and so yeah, things come up. So ask ask you know questions about how we handle. We try to hold space and mostly teach people to just listen um, first and uh, listen with attentiveness and care, um, and um, and so that's 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 primary my job. 
Thanks, Bilal. Um, as Rob said, I'm Paula Consolini, Director of the Center for Learning in Action. I add my welcome to all of you and gratitude, as Bilal had said, for sending your students here. Um, the Center is responsible for supporting students and faculty to do more work in the community, to do learning by doing experiential learning, experiential education as it's been known here at Williams, but also engage scholarship. With our student body, we have, and you know this because they're your children, but incredible energy, incredible talent, and it's our job at the center to try to help those students to find the ways to take their passion for doing good in the world somewhere out around here or someplace in the world while they're here at Williams. That can be done in extracurricular ways and curricular ways. Our job as a team is to monitor the organizations, particularly in our region. There's over a thousand nonprofits in this area. We monitor close to 80 to 90 of the organizations that we have potential to work closely with. We run a variety of programs, at least two dozen programs, many of them in local education, but also programming uh, in uh, the local jail, in terms of tutoring and coursework there. Uh, and also we support a variety of student organizations who are interested in work in the community. Some of those are service organizations, student groups like Lehman Community Engagement, whose whole purpose is to do service work in the community. But some of them are student organizations that have or that have cultural basis or are socially based and just decide that they'd like to do something in the community. So it's the job of our team to help those folks. We help faculty develop experiential courses to provide students ways to connect that community interest, the interest in doing good to the coursework that they're doing here at Williams. Um, the programming that we run, again, wide ranging. Uh, we sometimes teach courses, like right now, we're developing uh, the special project sections for a public affairs fieldwork course that happens over winter study. Uh, we have a variety of connections and opportunities that we help students get for winter study, but also in the community during the academic year. We hire a group of students, student leaders who help in education, but also student leaders who are helping, working with economic development organizations in the area, working on curriculum development, working with racial justice organizations um, and uh, public health organizations. We have a new uh, pilot where students are being trained to be social determinants of health screeners, which gives them an opportunity, even though it's totally remote and they're mostly calling people in Maine of all places, but they will be doing this work in conjunction with health coaching programming that's being run by the organization we're partnering with. So we've got a student leader who's organizing that and she is amazing. So we tap the talent of students to both do the work in the community, but also to develop leadership skills to help each other do the work. And you heard Bilal say the most important feature of their work is encouraging people to listen. It's frankly the most important feature of our work as well, because students need to be appreciative, humble, and understanding that the folks out there dealing with issues like food insecurity, poverty, homelessness, carceral reentry, there are folks out there who've been doing the work for a while, and you're working shoulder to shoulder with them as a partner, not as someone who's coming in and telling them what to do. And I have to say, we're thrilled now that we're back in person, the students have been phenomenal. Um, stepping up, dealing with all the challenges that you get. As you know, reentry is not that simple when organizations are short-staffed and there's anxiety and there's challenges related to COVID still. There are, our students are appreciative of that and they roll with the punches, as you say. We say, well, that's not working. That person seems uncertain, problematic. They lost a staff person. They're not gonna tell you what's going on. We have students really stepping up and appreciating it's going to be complex. And again, rolling with that and understanding there are gonna be some challenges and issues. But part of the beauty of this is their ability to learn by doing in the community. And then to take some of that learning back into the coursework that they'll do later. And we're seeing that with students who develop thesis projects. They become, for example, volunteer income tax preparers. We've got a course for that over winter study. Once they do that, there are a number of students who decide, I wanna do research in this area, they get access to clients because they've been volunteers certified by the IRS. Then they work with our faculty who specialize in tax policy to develop their own research project that they'll take right to, through to the thesis stage. So there, I could tell you a ton of examples. I'm going to stop here. There's so much that students are doing and we're so excited about the fact that they're taking on these challenges and more energized than ever to get back into it. And we are available at all times, almost at all hours. I've got some materials for you, um, but we're excited about helping students work through the programs that we and other offices offer, but also develop their own ideas into special pilots and projects. And I've got some literature and some, um, some tchotchkes for you if you're interested at the end. Anyway, but thank you for your time. 
Awesome, thank you. So I would love to echo so many things that were already said. Um, the first just being thank you for the honor of working with your students. Um, it's such a pleasure to be with them as they have these big ideas, as they want to make change in the world, and helping to shepherd them through that process and see them make big changes on campus as well. So my name is Christine Seibert. I work in the Zilka Center for Environmental Initiatives, which is our sustainability office on campus. So in contrast to CES, the Center for Environmental Studies, um, they, they cover all of the academic courses. We focus more so on operational sustainability. So what does it look like for us to decarbonize campus, for us to get to as close as we can to zero waste? So a lot of those big, bigger operational type questions are the ones that we're trying to answer within our office. Through that, we do work with a lot of students. We have 25 student interns um, this academic year working on a whole host of projects. Um, so like Paul, I'm like I'm trying to narrow down my examples. Um, one that's really interesting and really relevant, so you may know that your student got a water bottle during first days. So they got a water bottle, looks something similar to this, um, a metal water bottle that says Zilka Center on it, trying to encourage students to reduce waste, not the water here is great quality, so you can drink straight from the tap. It's perfectly safe. Um, so encouraging students not to buy single-use bottles. Um, but we've had um, comments over a number of years saying, you know, people really prefer now jeans. It's a bigger bottle. It's lighter. It's plastic. It's what we like. And so we're torn as, as, as the office on campus that generally tries to reduce our plastic. Um, but we're, we're thinking, well, is, is this something that's better suited to our students' needs? You know, we have concerns about what might be in the plastic, but we don't want to just say, because we don't know, we're, we're not going to go there. And so we're having a student right now do the research on what's the full life cycle analysis from extracting materials to building a bottle. So they're going into all sorts of organic chemistry of how do you even make plastic, but to help us realize what is the impact on the environment, what's the impact on human health, and what bottles really should we be buying for the student body when they come in. And so these are really relevant questions that our students are helping us answer. So we also have a summer internship program, so that runs for eight weeks over the course of the summer. We have eight to ten students, um, and that's one of my favorite times of year. The Berkshires is a beautiful area to be in for the summer, and I really enjoy working with students in more of a full-time role because we're able to go on field trips, have a lot more experiential learning in the region, and they can then bring that back and apply it to their projects. My hope with a lot of this is to be able to help students be able to figure out how do I make change within an institution. You know, we, we encourage students to think about whether that's through um, con construction, through working with people who are already working on this work, um, or whether that's maybe they need to protest something. But helping people, helping the students realize that they really do have a voice here and figure out what's the best way for them to listen to what's come before, to what people are already working on, not making assumptions about why something isn't happening, um, but really sitting with people, hearing why aren't things moving in the direction they want, and then thinking critically about how they can get there. So I'll, I'll touch on two other programs just very briefly. Um, one is Root, which we do in collaboration with the Davis Center. And so that's one of the eVenture programs. So uh, most students do Wolf, so that, that might be the program that your student was a part of. There's also Exploring the Arts, Leading Minds. But these are short, um, about three, three and a half, four day programs where students get to explore a certain topic in the region and bond with their peers. And so Root is focused particularly on social identity and the environment. So we're working with students to think about what does environmental justice look like in this region. We'll take trips to local farms, um, we'll do a social movement tour of campus, so thinking about what are the social movements that have happened on campus. So I realize that at this point your students are past their first year, so they're not going to go back and take, take Root. But we do accept students as leaders in route, even if it wasn't their eVenture. Um, we often have a number of students who get through the, their eVenture program, enjoy it, but say, boy, I really am curious still about route. And so they'll come back and they'll be a leader with us. So they'll still get to experience all the programming and help their students, their, the new generation of students, um, walk through these issues as well. And then the final thing I'll, I'll mention, and this I'm, I'm a staff advisor for, but it's really the students who are doing this great work, um, is a sustainable living community. And so there's various themed houses on campus that once your student gets past their first year, they're eligible to apply for. And so there's one of these houses that's a sustainable living community where they're thinking about how do we live more sustainably um, in our home and as students here. And they're also thinking about systemic change. So they're working on getting a composting program to get compost um, and all the, all, all the dorms are 
at least in all the dorm sort of regions so that students can collect their compost and then bring it to the dining hall. So they're really doing a great job of both educating their peers and also thinking about how they can make broader systemic change at the college. Um, but that's another way, if your student is interested in sustainability, that they can get involved on campus. So should I open it up for questions now? Feel free. Um, I have a couple of questions, um, I guess, for, for, for both Sandalal and for you as well. Um, and so I'll start with you if you were speaking. Um, how can students get involved with your center if they're not one of the 25, for instance, interns, or if they're not one of the 10 that are doing the summer um, uh, internship with you? Are there ways that they can um, get involved just generally or on a weekly basis or anything like that? And, and, and then I guess I'll, I'll just ask the one first. Yeah, so there, there's a number of different ways. Um, students often come to us with projects so that if they have a cool idea, it doesn't have to be an internship. We'll still support them and mentor them through those ideas. Um, so I recently met with a student who's working on a rideshare app trying to figure out how, how can they better connect students who are just going to Walmart anyways with someone who already has a car. And so they had questions about how do I calculate the greenhouse gas emissions behind that. So I'm always happy to meet with students and to help. Uh, we also host a variety of just events over the course of, of the semester. So students can sign up for our newsletter. We have sort of a Green Bites, which is our internal, all the, all the environmental happenings on campus, whether or not we're directly in charge of them or just, just sharing the word that they're happening. And then we have a newsletter that focuses more on what we're doing as, as a college. Um, but I always tell students, often students feel like knock on my door and they're like, I'm sorry to disturb you and take your time. I'm like, I would love to be interrupted. Um, I would much rather be talking with one of your students and writing emails on any day. Um, so yeah, please tell them that they're always welcome to stop by if they have you know, career questions, sustainability career questions, if they're thinking about, you know, we can't advise academically, but if they're just thinking about you know, different areas of sustainability that they want to explore, we're always happy to meet um, and to mentor students in that way. I would just say, BA3, that's my Unix. <laughs> Hit me up. <laughs> One question for you with respect to the data center and um, what students do there on a day to day basis. Can they, uh, if they've never been, can they just drop in and, and what, what happens there? Good question, yeah, there, the, that space is open for any and everybody. Um, so uh, generally, uh, you come into the space to the left. There's a big screen TV, and Natalie, our, our um, program coordinator, usually has some nature um, <laughs> uh, video playing of birds in a feeder or sheep on a field or something something nice playing or sometimes students will come in and change the channel a youtube channel and put on some music or something so there's like uh 16 rooms that students use um there's a room that the lgbtqia room that they kind of have it's an international room where the where the international student association meets there's um there's just rooms uh, there's a religion and like spirituality room there's just like a reflection room um uh, there's just all these different spaces and down on the first floor is a kitchen and lounge where they can just come cook chill and um and, and, and like relax um and students usually Sometimes it's just one or two students who will reserve a room, and we we, we ask, "What are you reserving this room for?" I just want to, I just want to be here overnight to just do my to do my homework, and just um, not be bothered with my dorm. You know, things on a weekend is party. I just want to have a space where I can just go and be away. And sometimes students just re reserve those rooms just to have a place that has a kitchen down below, and people that that they are familiar with or um, just be in that space. And, and, that, and so that's how our space is generally used. Yeah. And it's currently at the Bascom House. Bascom House, uh, yeah, is where we are now. Our building is being rebuilt right now. It's under all that construction, gonna be open up, God willing, um, November 23, next, next year. Hi, I have a question around discovering new sports. Uh, so, you know, um, there's so many facilities here that we want to learn how to ski or golf or snowshoe or cross-country ski or 
Yeah, we have physical education classes and everything you just mentioned, um, and transportation out to the ski areas, especially over winter study. We have a, um, sometimes there's some skiing that can happen, cross-country skiing sometimes happens on the golf course, but um, up at Prospect Mountain in Vermont or Jiminy Peak um, up near Hancock, and we run buses out there over winter study, so um, those are the times to learn how to ski. Uh, and we have beginning and um, intermediate and advanced golf classes. We now have started an intramural golf program this year where we're providing, we have golf clubs, we've been trying to get um, those available. So if people haven't golfed before, it's obviously pretty difficult to just go buy a set of golf clubs, it's cost prohibitive. Uh, so we have, those are available. Um, you know, I came to an East Coast college where I had never seen squash, I had never skied, I had never seen any of that before. Um, lacrosse, all completely new to me, but all of those things are available. Um, generally through PE classes is the best way. Also, the outing club does a lot of things in the area, kayaking, canoeing, um, you know, we're in this beautiful setting, hiking. Um, I, one of our new favorite or most popular um, PE classes that we started during the pandemic is hiking with dogs, which isn't really what you're asking about, but it's just like get out, get out in nature. Um, again, this very active outing club that provides a lot of those opportunities, including the equipment. Um, for equipment heavy sports so we really try to and the, and the other is like they keep saying if there's something new that we're not offering that somebody wants to do I know it's hard for a student to come and ask that but we're always you know trying to ask what kind of classes um, do we not offer um, that you might want to participate in but for the most part they are available um, yes yes I got a question about balance because I know that um, the four of you are representing sort of the tip of the iceberg on co-curricular programs at Williams. I also know that there's a lot of academic work that students need to get done. So how how best to balance those commitments and opportunities? I can start. I'm trying to make sure I'm on. Um, we talk about that a lot <laughs> to the students about how do they take care of themselves and really they're excited because there's so much to do and it's hard to choose. Um, and some of, the, some of the activities feel core to your identity and so just being in them supports who they are somewhat. It's really about who they are so that's, it's good to be in those activities because it's really gonna um, just make you feel right in your skin if that makes sense. Um, and then you're gonna be engaged with people who are, are interested in the same things you are. Um, but it certainly is, you know, trying to prioritize, talk to our students a lot. Now I think about sleep, eating, you know, don't put off your work, be scheduled. You know, what Blake Bilal said, don't go out on a Saturday night, go and come and do some work to get ahead of it or just take care of yourself. Um, they need to make choices. It's really hard because it's all really exciting and people are doing a lot of things and you want to join in um, and be a part of that. Uh, but I know, and. You know, our, our, the, the students that we work with have a lot of direct contact with their um, adult mentor and their coach, and we're always trying to help them um, parse out what they do. I think the other things we're trying to do is um, create grace and forgiveness, right, on Brown, for instance, in our place. Like, if you need a day, most of our coaches, if you need a day, like, I can't physically make it to practice today, or I have a lot of work to do, or I have this other activity I want to do, um, creating space, and I think encouraging the students to ask for that space, too. Sometimes I think they... We're concerned that students feel like I have to say yes to everything. Um, and so just like we keep saying to our adult colleagues, learn to say no uh, and, and learn to ask for the space and time you need. And you know, that's one thing encouraging you when your students ask you that I'm overwhelmed. Have you asked somebody if you can you know, take a day off from practice? Can I miss this meeting? Um, I think people are really willing and ready to create that, um, that space for folks. But students recognizing that they need that I think is important. But we. We talk about it a lot. I don't know if others have more comments. No, quickly, just I reinforce to my to to our students is that there is no social justice without without like personal like justice. Uh, having a having some type of like equilibrium within oneself, um, you can demand it um, till the roof comes off. But unless you are grounded yourself and taking care of yourself, at this point, this is a mid-year point, and so. In my uh, like, in my particular like position, the dean's office usually reaches out 
and there and uh, and so we hear about students who may need a little bit of help that are having some hard hardship and so last weekend and all this week it was it was it, I was reaching out to students going one-on-one -on -one, bringing them out to like like breakfast or lunch or or dinner how, and how are you doing let's create a plan to you know to center yourself let's you know let's get to a place of wellness um, as I like 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 Lisa brought up um, and um, so yeah that's just my push uh -huh. Similarly, we get to know our students, those that are working with us, especially those that are student leaders, uh, to make sure that they're thinking through these issues and thinking if you help them think a few steps ahead in terms of what the rest of the semester is going to look like um, and literally ask them, so how's that going? What kind of, what's your trajectory? There's a bit of a joke around here that midterm exams and papers seem to continue more than midterm. So it's like, how can you have three midterms? But So we joke about it, but, but it's also a way to confer with students and help them think through if necessary and help them just as people are saying prioritize themselves the other key step that we take is that we make sure that there are a range of ways to get engaged so that there are a lot of drop-in opportunities for students to do things and we'll steer someone who's not sure yet about how deeply they want to go and whether they have the time into those sort of drop-in options because then there is no long-term commitment you're able to just stop in if this offering is there if you want to do something if you're looking for both social opportunities and working on some social justice there's ways to do that through some of these kinds of program variations and that way you don't have to get in too deep but we also watch carefully try to help them if they're getting in too deep to do exactly what folks here are saying yeah I would echo all that I know for our meetings with students with all of our student interns we start with a how are you and not the <laughs> the quick where you expect them to say good and just move on but giving you know five ten if it needs 20 minutes to talk about how they are doing as a whole human being before we start in on work and I think for, for some students the we've had you know from our student evaluations students saying at first I was like I don't know about this like I expected to go into work and instantly be like this is what I've accomplished and but then they come to realize that's actually really nice to be able to check in um, and I find it really helpful as a supervisor because if I know someone's having a really rough week then I can adjust my expectations and see okay how much can they handle whereas if they're having a great week and they have all this free time if that ever happens <laughs> then I can think about okay let's be a little more ambitious it seems like you're you're maybe, maybe not bored but maybe you could use more but then there's other weeks where I'm like okay you know whatever you're able to accomplish is great um, but making sure that we're focusing on them as whole human beings instead can of I, just worker bees can I also give a shout out I think this is like really been a movement over the past five years I think this starts from the, this starts you know from the top down um, like I have found that Maud like Mandel is this way um, just like how can she be in touch with more students um, her, um, her office hours this year she asked me Blau, like how can I reach out to Minko students or the students more I was like well stop having office hours in your office <laughs> come to where we are <laughs> come to our space and the students will come you know to you and so she's like good idea blau <laughs> and she's going to do that on, on november 18 you know she really cares and, and, and is and is concerned about listening to students and being where they are and so when that happens from the top everybody like follows that 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 mood and is trying to be an attentive ear um to, yeah. I just have a question about the skiing and the winter study. Could you talk about more about that? Give us more detail. For example, this course will take how many weeks, which day, how many hours, how they get their lunch. I'd like to know more details if you could provide me. Yeah, I will share what I know about the details of the program. Um, it's run out of our outing club. So over winter study, all students are taking one course, and then they have other time. Um, to do other things and so buses go out to the mountain um, once a day and uh, for alpine skiing and for um, nordic skiing and usually students you know it goes out five days a week um, students don't need to go five days a week it's a few hours um, if you're going out to um, these places because it's, um, it's about a 20 minutes each way and then you need to get your equipment on and be there. So the outing club courses are a little bit longer in time just to make it worth it, to get out there and get all your gear on and do it. Um, so probably it's about a three hour time commitment on the days that they go and they sign up and there's a pass. Um, there is um, there is a, a 
because of the ski resort has some prices. There's a small fee, but there's also financial aid for students who are on aid, um, and it's a way that we are paying for um, about 60 students with no cost, and there's a sliding scale beyond that. Um, and then students also go out on their own, um, so you can do it as a course and learn how to do it, but there are also ways to get out there. Um, first of all, a lot of people go out and there are other opportunities and people will ski on the weekend. We just are sending them during the week. And again, it's about a three hour um, afternoon. I think it's, I, I can't remember if it's like noon to three or one to four, it's something like that, um, uh, that they go out and there. Again, there's teaching and then there's also for people who know, already know how to ski, right? It's sort of um, different levels depending upon your, your level of comfort out there. Does that answer that? Hi, um, thank you all for, for sharing your time with us and your insights about our students. I'm wondering if you have noticed since the spring when they made that wonderful announcement about financial aid, children no longer have to work, right? They have access to resources that they didn't have access to before. Are you noticing that this fall, you're seeing a broader range of students being able to take advantage of the opportunities that you're providing to them since, quite frankly, students are included no longer have to work for a certain set amount of time, that that's really their choice? Are you seeing that ripple effect of potentially more students being able to take advantage of opportunities that they may not have felt they had the time or bandwidth to take advantage of before? Or students feeling like they're a little bit more relaxed, they can really take in all that Williams has to offer because they don't have that financial pressure on their shoulders any longer? That's, that's a good question. We were just talking about uh, this year the general sense of like like students are more more like alive this year, more engaged this year as as a general feeling, and that could be kind of a lot of a post pandemic type of you know like oh, we're back to life you know here um, too, um, but that is a factor. But there's a significant part of our population that do not have need, but I'd have to say that out loud. And the international students do not have that benefit. Um, and so um, uh, there's a, 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 a there's a, um, and they are just as engaged. Um, so I'm looking at whether that has dropped off or that has picked up. They're just as engaged as those who do who have that benefit. Um, but what's been good also is there's so many new factors that we can't yet we don't have not the, the, the time to really assess it, you know, properly because we have these new four like affinity, uh, all our, our residential, uh, all my spaces that are also like really energizing um, building of like of like of meaningful uh, life outside of the like inside of uh, the, 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 the like um, when they're in class like that's that yet hasn't been like measured because it's our first year of it um, and then this need 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 blind thing has has also so we're just starting to feel the sense of that so we haven't had not enough time to give you a, a real thoughtful answer but we just had the comments before we went through came out the door we were like hey are you feeling good about this year <laughs> and it's true energy is high and as Bilal said I, I, that may be very, very well be a factor in this um, and what it may do I think it's that's the aim is to help students feel like they can imagine a little bit more they can open up and not feel so um, have to structure themselves in terms of I've got to find something that'll leave me that I can do as a paid job that leaves me enough time to do my other work so yeah it, I think it is a factor and we're hopeful that it continues to be a positive factor for students hi um, my name is Sarah Wilson class of uh, 1981 parent 2025 the changes in each of your areas over the last 40 years of the college is truly extraordinary um, I still remember uh, with great warmth the yoga class I took as a, uh, from a, to meet my phys ed requirement. I remember working, you know, staffing the domestic violence 800 number um, as an experiential education um, program. I remember with the student activist meeting in the Dodd living room uh, as our Thursday night coalition on student activism. So the idea that you have such developed programs and spaces for each of these areas over the last, you know, developed over the last 40 years is incredible. Um, I will say that one other change I've noticed um, is that there are a lot of parking lots. Uh, and I'm just curious since um, 
you focus on the operational sustainability issues. What thinking the college does, I'm sure they do a lot of thinking as they build these marvelous new structures, this being one of them, um, that didn't exist 40 years ago, what impact that has on the extent to which people do more driving? No, that's a great question. Um, and yeah, and there, there's multiple levels that I could address that on. One thing about, you know, how do we think about building buildings? You know, what, what environmental standards do we hold them to, whether that's LEED, whether it's Living Building Challenge. Um, we have um, the 66 Environmental Center on campus, which is designed to be a net zero energy and net zero water building. So not using um, any en energy beyond what they can, we can produce with our solar panels. It's net metered, but we produce the same amount that we use over the course of the year. We're, we're getting certified right now, so we, we think that's the case, and we're, we're going to hopefully prove it in the next year. Um, same thing with our water. We um, take the rainwater from the roof, treat it, and then are able to drink it. Um, but, but that is a great question. It's about parking and how much space is available. I know that some of the requirements for lead buildings include thinking about, you know, are there bike racks? Are there ways that we're encouraging people to get to, to and from the site, whether it's a bus station, bike rack, that don't require coming via your personal vehicle? Um, but yes, I, I will agree there are still a lot of parking spaces on campus. And one thing that I would like to see um, is just improved public transportation in the region. There is the bus that students can use to get, get to Walmart and get to different areas off campus. Um, but I know it doesn't run as frequently or as long as they would like. Um, so that's definitely something that I would like to work on. I, I just want to say also that, that the cost of living in Williamstown is extremely high for our dining facilities. Um, people who have to, who have to be here, rain, snow, or shine, um, for our for our you know for our for, for our facilities. People who clean the bathrooms and like they 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 have they they're usually living outside of Williamstown. Can't afford to live here uh, within Williamstown, and so um, so for them to have a place to park um, is really um, because on Park Street, uh, um, the town like real will like ticket you if you don't move your car within um, two hours, and so that's a challenge of uh, trying to find a balance there. Thanks so much.